Hello YouTube, I'm Nick and today we're going to be taking a look at this ugly little motorcycle that I bought. This is a 1969 Honda CT90. So it's a, a K1 which means it has the telescopic fork rather than the Springer front end. And it is a 90, so before the CT110. However, this is no longer a 90 because it has a Piranha 140cc engine in it. It still has the original exhaust, and the uh, new engine does have the four speed semi automatic gearbox, so you do still have to shift between four gears, but you do not have a clutch. It uses a centrifugal clutch. And I bought this because, one, it was cheap, and also I've, I've always wanted a CT, just because I, I think it's sort of the ultimate adventure bike. You know, it doesn't really go very fast, but it's got a big rack on the back. It's quiet, and it it's sips fuel, and you can take it just about anywhere, which is exactly what I intend to do with it. I, I want to really use it to just explore places you're not supposed to go, and just ride it around at mid-Ohio vintage days or other motorcycle events and and just have fun with it for what it is, not trying to make it anything else. Um, so really the, the entire reason it has the the aftermarket engine is because the original one, the, the clutch failed, it exploded. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it, but I'm going to be rebuilding it pretty soon once I have time. But this uh, this aftermarket engine does have 12 volt electronics and it is a it does have electric electric start um, I don't have that connected yet but but it does have it and uh, here's the thing the old one would not run without a battery but with this 12 volt electric it runs without a battery and the lighting is bright even without a battery it doesn't really flicker at all that's really one of the the nice things about <laughs> modern modern electrical systems and this is a 12 volt that I can add accessories to and not have to worry about power draw or battery drainage which is really not something that you can say about a lot of old Hondas. So this engine was also very easy to install it just share the top engine mount bolt the lower bolt does not line up but I bought a little bracket from DrATV.com um, that it's the lower the lower engine mount and it fits perfectly and it was only like 15 bucks so in addition to the engine I also had to get a new ignition switch which instead of the original Honda unit was a single circuit switch and it was just providing power from the battery positive terminal to the the rest of the bike Whereas this switch does not only provide battery power to the bike, it also has a built-in kill switch for the engine. I was not able to use the original foot pegs because they did not clear this little portion of the engine case. So I just these are just regular <laughs> cheap pit bike foot pegs, which of course bolt right up because this is a cheap pit bike engine. The foot pegs also had a side stand, but it was a little bit too long, well, a lot too long, about six or seven inches too long. So I cut it, and I also put a little bit of an angle in it just to have it sweep up away from the ground a little bit. This is a genuine Mikuni VM22 carb. I think it's a 22. So it does not really have a, a typical choke. It has an enriching circuit. This engine does have a reputation for wanting to kick back when you use the Kickstarter, but I haven't run it, really run into an issue with it so far. I really love how quiet this thing is. It does have the original CT90 exhaust.
And of course, one of the main reasons I wanted the semi-automatic gearbox was because you can ride it with one hand, which I will demonstrate now. Just put it into gear and give it some throttle. One thing to note is that I am using the original sprocket, rear sprocket, and uh, that's a 45 tooth. I think it would greatly benefit from a 40 tooth rear sprocket. Um, as it is right now, I, I've really only hit about 35, 40 miles an hour just because at that, at that speed, the engine is screaming. And uh, being a new engine, I didn't want to push it too hard. Um, so when I do get a new sprocket in, I, I anticipate maybe a top speed of around 50 miles an hour.
So that's about it. That's the 1969 Honda CT90. I look forward to making some new videos about it.